<sighs> you know, after my deep frustration with Doctor Who Flux and the infuriation I felt trying to watch the Netflix Cowboy Bebop, um, it's nice to be reminded that sometimes things are just good. Hey, I watched Arcane. It's real good. Uh, before I get into it, though, uh, in any detail, I do feel the need to point out Arcane is based on a video game. It's based on League of Legends. League of Legends is a product of Riot Games. And Riot Games is a garbage company that fosters an uh, environment of harassment. And uh, I personally do not feel as a company worth supporting. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You will make your own judgment, your own call for what you are comfortable with. However, I feel that I am not comfortable praising something that might direct people to a product made by a company like this uh, without them realizing that's what they're like. That's kind of where I'm at with these things at this point. I'm not gonna say you're a bad person for engaging with League of Legends or products from companies like this. Uh, I am gonna say though that like, you not only have a right, but kind of a responsibility to be aware that that's the kind of company you're supporting, and then you make your own call from there. That having been said, this show's real good. It's real, real good. Can, let's, this is a gorgeous show. And this, this manages, okay, I'm trying to think how I want to explain the visual style of this. It's, it reminds me of Into the Spider-Verse without directly aping that, but it has that similar 3D animation that has been crafted and shaped and had additional elements applied to it so that it is more evocative of 2D animation. And I, it's important to me to make the comparison to Into the Spider-Verse because the more typical way that you sort of see this blending of 2D, 3D is the very low rent way of basically just um, cheap ass shell, shell, cell shading looking stuff like we got with Marvel's What If, which I had mixed feelings about, but, and, and eventually like I got over it, but I still don't think it looked very good in terms of its visuals. This looks gorgeous. So whereas Into the Spider-Verse was designed to evoke comic books, this feels like it's designed to evoke an oil painting. It's wonderfully pretty to look at. So that's thing one. This thing, gorgeous. Now, that's not the end all be all. I've seen very pretty things that did not engage me. That's actually usually been a fairly large chunk of the uh, Love, Death, and Robots series. A lot of it's very pretty and means nothing to me. This is also a good story and good characters and well-constructed and bold. I feel like that's good. And I don't mean bold and like, oh, it's breaking taboos and it's on the cutting edge. And no, 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 no. that's not what I mean. It's bold in that it moves forward with confidence. There is no sense of being unsure of what they're doing. And some of the moves made, like that takes some guts to do that, especially in what is a first season of a show that was not guaranteed a second season. We now know it's getting one, but at the time it was made, that was not guaranteed. I mean, heck, you know, it didn't, it wasn't even a matter of like how big a promotion it did or didn't get. Netflix pr promoted the heck out of the Cowboy Bebop thing that got canned after one season. So there was no guarantee, but the safer thing, the template generally, if is to set up a world and establish what the status quo is and what the deviations of it are. And even if it's only meant to be the status quo for the duration of this season and it is shaken up by the end, um, you don't generally see massive shakeups in the middle of a first season. And this does it several times. I can't get into detail with that without getting into spoilers. I will be doing spoilers a little bit later, but like this thing just, it has such confidence in what it's doing. The voice acting, also very good. I didn't catch a single stunt cast celebrity voice actor. Everybody's bringing their A game in order to portray these various characters. All of the characters, all right, to what degree they are deep characters varies. Some are a little bit more shallow, but there wasn't a single character that I can think of 
where I didn't understand why they did what they did. There wasn't a single name character where I couldn't say that about them. And I know that feels like, well, you should always know why characters do what they do, but uh, think about it. How many characters are you just sort of left in other shows? Are you just sort of left to assume why they're doing something? You're left to assume they do it for money. You're left to assume that they do it for power. You're left to assume they do it just because they think it's fun. But it's not really explained why that's a motivation for them. So here, whether it be a desire for lifting up the downtrodden, a desire for power, a desire to have more direct control over the goings-on, a desire to maintain any kind of peace even though you know you're bending the rules, a desire for personal profit, or just a desire to look smart in a room full of people clearly smarter than you. You get why everybody is making the choices and the decisions that they are making without bogging any of it down. It's, it, it is a perfect balance of just the right amount of information for the characters that we get why anything is going on. And here's the really fun thing about that. You would think understanding a character well enough to be able to say, this is why they're doing that, would mean the character can't surprise you. Because you understand them well enough that you must know what is their logical decision based off the things I know about them, and then you can just predict their every move. Except that if you're clever, and you go about it smartly, then that means you can take a character who the audience knows well enough to understand why they are the way they are, and still surprise them by altering that person's situation or conditions or giving them new information that forces them to confront that why and to possibly pivot off it or to decide, well, that wasn't accomplishing the why that I was trying to fill. I need to do something else. And that, again, is something that this does. I, like, I don't have the time in my day. I kind of want to rewatch this and, like, really chart out the character motivations, and at what point everything gets dropped, because it's just real good. Real, real good. And the action scenes are really well done. I will admit the use of music, especially at some points where it does kind of seem like the show turns a little bit into a um, into a music video for itself. Actually, at one point, it kind of actually very literally does that. Um, it's a little, it's a little like, <laughs> okay, doesn't fully take me, well, it takes me out of it a little. It does kind of break the reality of the situation. It's a very real feeling world, um, very well thought out across the board. But it, but those movements are also kind of a cheesy fun that like, okay, yeah, okay, I, sure, ha, have that. That's fine. But it is really well thought out because it is dealing with the kind of machinations that you can get that, okay, you know what? Actually, let's make this comparison. It feels like season one of Game of Thrones in that you see the big pieces being moved. You see the power players and the moves that they are making, but you are seeing as well the ground level and how that is impacting all the way down the the chain of privilege. And it doesn't get its head all up in the cloud, so like we're only focusing on the movers and shakers, nor does it get overly gritty where it's like, well, they just don't care about us, so we won't even talk about them. It is dealing with how these layers, these inequalities interact with each other, whether it be directly with intention or indirectly as a natural consequence of somebody's decisions or actions. Eh, yo, (laughs) oh, it's so good. It's real, real good. And now I'm gonna start talking spoilers. So if you have not already seen it, please, please do. Um, again, assuming you're comfortable knowing that it is it, it is in some way going to bolster Riot Games. And mm, if you don't know about Riot Games, I'm not going to dedicate a whole bunch of time to uh, explaining their issues. But I'll put a link uh, in a pinned comment for uh, for an article or two or maybe a video, something, something on them. Because, yeah. But assuming that that is not a barrier to entry for you, and if it is, I get it, uh, 
I, I'd really recommend checking this out. Okay, spoilers. I, I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of this time talking about Jinx. So, Jinx is a really interesting balancing act. And I haven't, because I've, I, I did the thing that I normally do, which is not look into the critical reception by other people, whether it be here on YouTube or I like, I know it's highly praised. I know that, but I haven't read specific um, breakdowns, criticisms, critiques, whatever, uh, or heard them on YouTube or whatever. I, I don't seek those out until I get my thoughts out there. So I kind of want to find um, an assessment from people who are either knowledgeable about or have more direct personal experience with certain types of mental illness and get their opinion on Jinx because I feel like this is a show, this is a, an exaggerated, sensationalized show that handles the mental illness aspects of a character like Jinx better than most but I'm kind of hesitant to say that it handles it well as a blanket statement because there is ultimately a little bit of the kind of generic Hollywood, well, she's crazy thing going on. Um, but I feel like that's not really necessarily my criticism to make. Here's what I'll say uh, about Jinx. I appreciate that they established that she has some degree of Issues, baggage, damage, imbalance, whatever you want to call it, going on even before we hit episode three and things kind of start breaking around her um, and she doesn't respond to it well. Even before that, we get the indications that like she's, she needs a lot of help. She, she cannot manage herself completely on her own, and she needs a lot of help. And then by the end of episode three, she is left to be helped by people who mm, are not going to help her result in being a well-balanced person. So uh, I think that was a good thing because like, it's, it's a very common thing in shows and TV and movies to just basically have, and then they were traumatized and now they're evil. Oh, God. Um, it also really helps that Jinx is less evil and more just chaotic. Now, that can bring its own kind of baggage, the idea of like, oh, the unpredictable crazy person. But what I mean by chaotic, I mean that she's not full bore into like, I. she's not making, usually, not in more than a snap judgment thing, making a conscious decision, I will dismantle and destroy everything. Because that's like one of the weird kind of Hollywood crazy things that they do that this doesn't, which is the thing like, oh, they were totally normal, then something happened, and now they're like cold calculating and want to destroy the world. Like, ah. Uh, if they were actually that different from how they are now, then something really traumatic happened, and they should not be holding it as well, together as well as this appears to be. And Jinx is not holding it together well. And I appreciate that um, a lot of characters around her recognize that, and it's Silco who was not good for her. I will not accept arguments to the contrary. Being raised by him was not good for her, but that does not mean he does not care. And I like that he protects her, or at least tries to, even in the face of knowing that her presence makes almost everything about his life more difficult than it would be if she wasn't here. Because some days that's parenting. <laughs> Um, and this is kind of the extreme end of that, um, particular kind of, uh, juxtaposition in terms of your care and the, uh, issues that come with the person that you're caring for. Uh, but like, that's a dynamic that exists, uh, you know, in, in, re yeah, not just in parenting in relationships where like you care deeply, but sometimes like, yeah, this is a lot to handle, but it doesn't make you stop caring and it doesn't make you let go or abandon that person. Even as you understand that from the outside looking in, many, many, many people would tell you to do so. So that's really good. Um, 
like all the characters are good. Vi's good. I like that there's like no massive attention brought to Vi and uh, I can't remember her real name now. Vi calls her Cupcake. Like this, this show is is sweetly gay. I like that. I appreciate it. I know um, there was like one um, trans character or at least implied trans character that appeared to be a sex worker. It's like a tossed off background joke. Don't love that, but also so little emphasis was put on it. I'm like, I'm prepared to shrug it off. I still don't love that it was there. It's it's just a very tired, um, kind of easy, jokey way to represent trans people. And like, can we not anymore? Victor was another character who really fascinated me. Like really felt the layers of complexity for what he wanted to accomplish versus what his work was actually resulting in. And that he didn't just lose sight of that. Because again, the lazy way to do that is once he starts, you know, making things that he just loses sight himself of, you know, being able to help the people he said he wanted to help because he's just focused on the work. But no, he's aware that he's not helping the people he wanted to help. And so is Jace, though not as acutely. And he is, he is just stuck staring at all the things standing in his way that are funneling his work into not being what he wanted it to. But he's not going to abandon that because he still thinks good can be done, but he also knows this is not what I was trying to sign up for. And that's not a revelation of like, oh, I must change sides. They're twisting my work. Like, no, he knows. Every step of the way, he knows. And watching that play out as a conflict within him, oh, that's really good. Like all, just all these characters are really good. Even when it's something as simple as we have a character show up later. I'm sorry, I can't remember her. I'm like, I'm way better with faces than names. So you got to forgive me to a certain degree. But the, the, the mother of the councilwoman, this warmongering focused on the idea of being able to conquer her enemies at all times character, which is like traditionally an incredibly masculine archetype. And like, she fits that right down to having the servant. It's implied that she keeps around just because they're pretty and it's probably uh, bonking uh, when other people aren't around or maybe even when they are as a power play. Who knows? But just having that character be a woman and be like believable. And it's not just like taking the tropes and grafting them onto a woman. Like, no, building a female character around those those traditionally masculine archetypes. Just that little shift makes the character way more interesting than I think. Really, she has much business being, but she is. She is really interesting. And she ha and like even the most seemingly shallow characters have these little moments, these little interactions, these little lines that let you know, oh, they thought about this person when they wrote them. They wrote a person. And not just something to slot into a necessary narrative element. These are not placeholder characters. These are people. Oh, it's real good. Real, real good. And uh, I, I do encourage people to check it out. Hopefully you already did so. Like, when I give the spoiler warning, you didn't keep watching. I didn't really spoil that much of the plot. I will say that, like, the very end, the very, very end, that is a heck of a bold way to end a season when you're not positive you're getting a second one. And honestly, I think it works too. That could conceivably function as a final episode. Reminds me of Farscape's final episode in that way. Like, you so desperately want to see what comes next. But this is also the end point of what we were dealing with right now. And if things come back, we're now going to be dealing with a whole new situation. And so it still works as a stopping point. <laughs> oh, Arcane, you seen it? What'd you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe. I got a Patreon. Uh, the link up there, also link in the description. There's other stuff down in the description as well. Links to my various social media accounts. Um, also a PO box, if you want to indulge that notion. Even just a postcard. I like getting mail. It's fun. But uh, no pressure on any of it. Take a relaxed attitude around here. So just uh, come on back next time you need a break. None of this would have been possible without my supporters over on Patreon. In particular, I want to thank Robin Powell, Raven McBain, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Robin Moore, 
and Shayla Gourlay. If you'd like to hear me possibly mispronounce your name, maybe consider looking at the reward tiers over on the Patreon. But either way, don't worry about it too much. Take care of yourself.